Hey guys, and welcome to the Wakefield to Not Only Root Building series, episode number 26. Today we're going to be doing a bit of a project update. I've not done one for a while, and I've not really had much time to work on the route until recent times again. Uh, it's now July, and the last time I actually did some episode filming uh, was March, so it's quite a lot has gone on since then, as you'd expect. Um, we start off here with Pontifat Monkill. We've got custom platforms in and uh, custom footbridge courtesy of Callum. Uh, we're waiting on signage, but obviously it's a lot different now to when you, you would have seen it in episode 24, I think it was, when we did some of the station stuff here. So it's now changed around quite a lot. We've got new custom station and um, shelters and everything, just because it, it looked a bit pants with the um, lofts and stuff and, and the wrong clutter that was on the station. So we've gone for it pre-2018, as I've said before. So it's pre-2018 extensions. There are some fixes to be made. The footbridge currently has like a bit of floating on it, uh, which needs to be sorted on the left-hand side of the seat from here, actually. Um, that's going to get sorted, obviously. Uh, and then there's some extra signage that needs making, but we're uh, looking quite well done nearly here. Not too much more to go. Uh, quite happy with that footbridge and everything. We've got some of the uh, the cool signage. As I say, I'm from the area, so I'm kind of obsessed with making sure we get all these little details in, especially on the stations. It means a lot to uh, actually have this stuff in game for me. Uh, massive appreciate uh, Callum, Callum doing that for me, obviously, because it's uh, a big deal to get it done uh, free of charge and everything. So I uh, really appreciate that. So yeah, since episode 25 was done, a lot has gone on. None of this was here in episode 25. Uh, I don't even think the Harry Bow factory was here. We've got a basic model of the Harry Bow factory up there, the Dunnell's factory in Pontifact that sits looking over the town. Now obviously that green space there is completely untouched, so there's no point showing that. Uh, and then the stuff onwards towards Featherstone hasn't changed much. There's been some minor changes to fields and stuff just to improve the look, but nothing major. Uh, this is where I've been working on the graveyards and everything. And then you got the Pontifact Colliery's FC, I think it is. Or something like that that's uh, down here. Um, you get some pretty cool views from there on the pitch with the uh, trains going along the banking and stuff like that. But yeah, we've got mostly uh, completed now on some of these sections. So the town, the philosophy I've gone for with that is not to use too many lofts. So I've used the lo I've used lofts and roads here where they're actually needed. But I don't use lofts and roads when we get up here. I just put buildings, paint and trees down. And the reason I do that is just to ease loading stuff. I don't want to kill people's systems with a loading store just to load in some fence or a wall or a road that is up here because you're not going to see that from down there. This one obviously is a bit more important because you're kind of going to see that because you went under this bridge. So that's why I've obviously made sure I've done them down here. Same for that one. You're not going to necessarily see them, but they are you know, right next to the track sort of thing. Um, over here, uh, I've been actually making some progress down the Castleford line. So we're getting heading on down that way. Now this will be coming uh, as a part of version 1 and that is a plan to uh, actually include this bit. And... Uh, you can see where I've added the tracking down there to Castle as you got a cut side where there used to be a junction here. It used to be able to go straight across onto the uh, Leeds bound line, but these days obviously you reverse at Castleford. So services come from Leeds to Castleford, reverse, and then go up to Nottingley. So that'll be obviously a cool scenario to do. Um, but yeah, um, I've added the tracking down to Castleford. Whether I'll add it up to Middle, uh, Milford or not, is uh, I've not decided fully yet. It's going to take quite a while to do Castleford itself, so we may leave Milford until episode until version two. We'll see, uh, but certainly Castleford being version one and all this section. So this is pretty early day scenery so far. Just a placeholder signal box, um, got the full pass and everything, and all I've done now is just started on the scenery. So. This is based just as they were starting to build some houses down here in I'm trying to think when it was. It was about 2017, so 2017-18. Uh, I used one of the Google overlay images uh, on Google Earth actually to work out where the roads and everything were built to. So half of this estate will end up being fully new, and then half of it's already built. And I've literally all I've done down here is just put some houses in. Now this is where the Prince of Wales colliery used to be. So that's what that little side in is here. This is where the uh, the line went into Prince of Wales Collier at the loading point. The actual, in real life, the loading signals are still here, or they were until recently. Um, but you can sort of see down here, you've got the old fence that remains. This is all based off the cab ride that I've got. Uh, and there's actually some coal left here as well. So I've put that in as well. That's there in real life. 
On this side, I've tried to recreate the actual coal. Obviously, it's not been painted yet, but that's where the coal heaps and everything and slag heaps at uh, Prince of Wales were. And they're quite high, so I've made that quite a high hill. Took quite a lot of editing in, uh, in the editor. And again, this bit here took quite a lot of work because obviously TS doesn't, you know, create these sort of cuttings and stuff. So, you know, channeling out the uh, scenery and everything. And then you've got the crazy gradients on the Castleford line as well. So that just looks like a roller coaster, but it is actually like that because what happens is it climbs between these two bridges at like a 1 in 55 and then it climbs again and eases off a little bit and then it climbs again. It sort of does it in stages because there used to be more collieries down there. So that down there is towards where Escape is these days, those that know the area. Glass House. And so that's where we'll be building towards next. Obviously, there'll be a lot of stuff needed from Calum for that because of the. Uh, you can't really make Escape with anything else. <laughs> So since last episode we've been messing about down here putting all these allotments in all the distant scenery so it's housing blocks at the back and just basic house placement here because again you're not really seeing anything from the cab so it's just very very basic because we don't need to go over the top and try to save on frame rate. Pantrap Monk as I said it's already pretty much done uh, it just needs a bit of extra signage and fixes to go on and then we'll be sorted with that and uh, next up then will probably be Nottingley Station. So this has all been seen in previous episodes, if you've watched the previous episodes or you obviously already know about all this, if you haven't then check them out because you'll see about when this all came together. I've been working on this area down here just to bring it to a bit closer to completion. None of it can be considered complete really but um, it's obviously getting that way on. As you can see it's, it's more or less there now. Just needs terrain paint in most places. There's bits of areas where I need to put some more terrain paint on. Might add a little bit more detail on that street there, but then again, as I said, I don't want to keep adding stuff that's just going to kill the you know systems. I'm not sure what I've got. Here. I think I've got a hot tub here, which I'm going to have to remove because we kind of got steam coming across the track. Let's just take that out. That's obviously the way the game's wanting to blow the smoke off it, so we'll remove that. We can do it that going across track. Apparently I've got a bloodbath here. I think that's because I've clicked one in the editor and it's gone red. It won't actually be red when you download the view. It's not like Halloween view or out. So yeah, we're just basically getting on with uh, adding these bits in. Sorting these fields out. I've been doing distant scenery up there as well since the cab video that we did. I think episode 22 we did the first drive. So since then I've been uh, doing a lot more along here. Just to make sure uh, it's all getting towards completion. Added all the clutter in this in real life, so there's a few sleepers dumped about, there's bits of uh, there's all old sort of uh, junction boxes and stuff. We actually need a few more of those, I think, making for the game, which uh, I'm sure will happen at some stage. This is where the junction goes off to Heavy Bridge, as we've said before. And the scenery down there um, just carries on around the corner. I still need to add that in, which I will be doing. In a future episode. But yeah, we've more or less got this bit in as well since episode 22, whatever it was when we drove. We drove to here and then I crashed because I'd not fixed a world on the track. Uh, I have now fixed that, thankfully. So you got the houses that overlook all the area. And uh, just generally sort of having a look at this area. So we've got the Swinton and Nottingley line that goes underneath here, the SNK. I'm more like the S at this point because it's going to Australia and Twinton. This is already past Notting Hill, obviously. Basic housing estate down there. And the scenery sort of peters out as you go up there towards uh, Aqua from Pontefract by Gill. But I love this view because you can get some nice screenshots. So I already tried to get a few and it's uh, a nice view there with trains going over the top as well. So yeah, then you're coasting down into Notting Hill Station. So I've worked quite a bit on this area as well to make sure. This is the old A1, the A162 as it is now. That's under there. And then you get down into Nottingley Station. So we've got Nottingley Station and the Nottingley, East, uh, Nottingley West Junction here. Already uh, more or less done. There's a good view of the power station there dominating the whole sort of backdrop which is uh, good. I like that. So this one took quite a lot of work. Nottingley was quite hard to do because of uh, these huge sort of embankments on the side there obviously placed with lofts and this took a full 
good three or four hours on an evening getting all this uh, foliage up and whatnot. So that's quite a steep banking. And then it's got a uh, retaining wall at the bottom, same on the other side. Now I've not got any of the buildings up on the actual banking in yet, but I'll be putting them in uh, as soon as I can. So we've got a bit of foliage down here because it's quite overgrown, just next to not in the platforms. Now we've still got lofted platforms here, we're going to obviously go custom with these just because we want to make sure the stations look as good as they can do. These look pretty naff because of the lofted platforms and everything, so that'll be something to get sorted out. But I quite like the view there coming in, I think it's uh, decent, so happy with how it's looking so far. Um, that bridge needs to be finished off and then we'll have Nottingley Depot through there as well. And uh, this is where the line is split, so you can go left to Drax, and you go right towards Shaftholme Junction, Doncaster, uh, and across the flyover at Shaftholme as well, if you're going towards Hatfield and Stainforth and stuff like that. And uh, North Lincolnshire. But yeah, that brings you sort of up to date with where we are at the moment in this project. We've got a fair bit done. There's not actually, to be honest, that much needs doing now. Uh, on some sections of the route. The scenery on the actual Wakefield and Ottingley section is you know, pretty well done. And uh, we've got bits to add in, bits of track to put in as well, which I'm going to actually get on with maybe in this episode or next episode. But yeah, there's not a great deal to show that I haven't shown already because I've just shown all the stuff I've been working on. But yeah, I'm pretty sure I've been working on all this since episode 25 went out and... Uh, what not or was filmed rather. I like to bank a few episodes when I can and record say a few in a day because I have to be in the right mood to do it and all that stuff and uh, not burnt out which I've been burnt out for quite a while to be honest so hence I'm just getting back into the flow of it again. But yeah we're, we're sort of uh, getting there now. Some nice views when you want to take screenshots you can go up here and take screenshots I like this view. It's not got the cluttering on the streets on the right yet, but some of the views I'm hoping to create make it so people can get some nice screenshots again with this air view up here. Much the same. And then you got the bit, as I said, up to Featherston. Now, I think since episode 24, 25, I think I've finished this air view up here. So I've gone really low detail up there. Um, you're not going to get much further than about 300, 400 metres of scenery, maybe a little bit more. But it's just literally basic building placement. I'll probably put a little bit more detail on some of these bits here, so the gardens. But I'm not going to do it on this side, because at the end of the day it's behind a thick line of double trees, or triple trees actually. Um, and doing that would just be serving to you know waste FPS and load and store and performance generally. So you've got the uh, stables for the race course up there. The Pontifat race course in real life is just sort of in the gap here between the two lines. So you've got the Castleford line there. If I zoom in, you can probably actually see, yeah, that's looking towards the Normanton line as well. So you can sort of see how close the lines all are here. But yeah, I think since episode 25, I think I've, certainly since episode 22, I've been doing some extra work around here. Just to get it so it's uh, looking a bit better. Still got areas look here where I need to lower the terrain, so I can show you what I'll do here. And I think I still need to repaint this terrain as well. It looks like it's got the wrong ballast texture. So have a look. Yeah, I had the wrong ballast texture on anyway. So that all needs sorting out. But anyway, when you've got a bit that's cutting in like that, you can just use a, I use a 12 star size brush on the uh, grab height selector and just drag, drag it down at the point there so it goes back below. Um, Quick and easy fix is just fiddly because it happens a lot in a lot of areas, so you'll sort of keep seeing it um, as you're building your routes and stuff like that. So I'll end up having to do that about 50 times probably across the route. I'm not completely happy with this bit yet, how the grass sort of comes into this path, but I like it more than if it was just bare, bare ground. So um, yeah. Uh, I think this was all shown in previous episodes, so there's no point in me carrying on just keep showing the same stuff. Let's crack on and let's lay some of the old middle main line. Let's lay towards Monkburn. I think it sounds like a winning idea. So, see you on the other side in a second when I just uh, sort out my track lane stuff. Right guys, i found gradients now, so it took a bit of doing, but we found them. Um, 
so I'm doing the middle of main line as I said from Crofton East Junction um, down to Monkburn Glassworks so it's, it's not the middle of main line these days it should have branch line but in the old days it was the middle of main line and that's kind of reflected on the screen now on the left hand side you can see that the gradient reference for this is Tapton Junction to Colm which are a bit weird it's doing that but anyway it's all just thrown in here we've got it there um, so we've got all the information that we need we've got about five miles of track to lay uh, initially the glassworks itself is a little bit further in there uh, but we've got the main part of the uh, actual running line there to do the gradient info actually carried on all the way down to Grand Fop Collier which was shut around 1998 1999 so the gradient info for that and indeed a lot of other old colliers is still in there um, but we've managed to pull out the bit that we need and the way I did that was to use this root code from the sectional appendix to find my mileages and everything. So we're starting, we're doing it backwards because we're laying from Crofton East End. So we're laying from Oakenshaw South Junction and we're starting at 181.1689. So that's 1,687 metres into mile 181. Now, I'm not going to go into all the maths of this because I did it before in the earlier episodes. If you're wanting to know how I'm doing the gradients, check out the very first few episodes in this series because that's where I went into detail on exactly how you decipher what a gradient is and whatnot. Now, we've got to remember we're doing this in reverse. So normally, obviously, you would lay from 177 to 181. We're not. We're laying from 181 to 177. So all these gradients... They're reversed, so it says minus 1947, that means it's downhill, but it's downhill that way, from the top to bottom, we're going from bottom to top. So, we need to change these, so they're reversed, because we're doing the opposite way around, so we need to make sure it's not minus 1947, it's 1947. Next one is minus 321, that's if you're going the other way, it's going to be 321 up for us, so we're going to change that to 321. And just the same for all of these. Um, obviously, where it's 404, we need to make it minus 404. Where it's minus 404, make it 404. Um, and all we're doing is making it so that we can not make any of us laying this track. It's going to be right because we've set the gradient to make sure we're in the right direction. Because you could very easily start laying this track and do it sort of the wrong way around. So I'm going to write a note to myself. Gradients reversed. So I know to myself now that I've reversed the gradients there. And that, and if I look in future, that's what's happened. So you can see already we've got the uh, section in here to Openshaw South Junction. You've got the curve there that we need to add in that goes towards Wakefield Kirkgate. So Wakefield Kirkgate's just over there in the distance. So this curve used to be double track and used to connect and be used by diverse and midland trains and stuff like that that used to go up to Westcott um, and into Leeds that way instead of carrying on on the midland. But we're going to carry on laying the midland. So we're just south of Crofton. So Crofton Depot, not a customer at the moment, but it's there. Well, some of it's there. Um, Crofton East Junction is where we leave the Wakefield to Nottingham line. It comes around on this curve, curves back on itself and then joins to where the Midland once was. So the Midland main line carried on up there and was ripped up around 1989 and went through to Normanton, which you can almost see actually. It's just over there. You see a green signal. So that's where you used to be able to go carry on straight through to uh, to Normanton, Goose Hill Junction. Closed around 1988-89 and uh, that's when the start extended all the cross-country stuff. I thought I would have started at that point, but sent the cross-country stuff via Morthorpe. Uh, and into Wavell Westgate via um, Fitzwilliam and everything. Obviously, back in the day, this was your prime cross country route. And we're talking steam days in the 70s and early 80s. And indeed, in the early 80s, they did start diverting them. Now, for me, this is a line I've got a massive obsession. We're not going to lie. It's a, a line that means quite a lot to me. And um, I certainly enjoy doing it. So I'm going to get my calculator up. Uh, I live quite local to it. I live in Crofton, so growing up around here, and it's always a bit a bit of a mysterious line because it's sort of there. You don't really think much to it, but then you think how important it was back in the day was obviously quite important. So what we're going to do here is we need to get miles to meters on the screen, meters to yards. Sorry. 
So we need to get meters to yards on the screen because we've got our gradients here in yards. We need to lay them in meters. So we need to convert from meters to yards. Again, if this is all going over your head, just go and check out the other episodes. I explained it all there. Um, and indeed, there are other videos available that show you the gradients and stuff and how you do them from the sheet that I'm doing. Um, 158 yards. 158 yards, 144 meters is what we need to lay. So remember, we're laying this uphill, so we want to set the gradient down here. Set the track rule to go track rule. And we want to set this to 1947, and all we're doing is 144 meters of track. Nothing complicated, really. Uh, I'm going to leave easements off just because we want to set a point and see where I am, uh, and then we'll turn easements on. So we're looking at 144 meters, which is there. So that's 144 meters right now. Next gradient, let's have a look. It is a one in 321 uphill, and what we need to do here is 1531 minus 387. That works out what the distance is between these two gradients. So we've got 1,144 yards of 1,321 uphill. And we need to put that in here, 1,144. Gives us 1,046 meters of track to lay at a gradient of 321. So 321 down here, it's uphill again, because remember we reversed the gradients. Uh, flick easements on. And then we'll start getting the purple guidelines and stuff appearing now so that we can lay it properly with those easements. Now you see that line that we're crossing, we're getting ready to cross, is the GN main line. So that's the line from Kings Cross to Leeds effectively. Um, or more accurately, I suppose, Doncaster to Leeds is the GN main line, as I said. And that would go into Wakefield Westgate once it gets down there. Um, I think I've said in previous episodes how awesome it must have been back in like steam days and stuff to stand on that bridge there and see the Thames Clyde Express going over the top and the white rose going underneath, it must have been epic. You know, all the famous locos as well. Anyway, stop waffling and get on with it. And also stop waffling because I distract myself and then I make mistakes. So this is where I'm just trying to... lay the track correctly. Turn it down to passenger. Trying to get the actual trajectory of the curve is quite tricky. Probably because I'm slightly off in the first place, to be honest. So I see it should turn a little bit more there, which is what I'm not doing. So let's go back and try that again. Put it on the passenger one straight away. And this is the reason I don't generally do these track building ones because it takes so long and you end up with a 50 minute episode which is nothing really. So I'm trying to follow the guidelines. It's quite difficult to see what I'm doing. For me as well as you I'm sure. So I'm just going along the guidelines. This is where um, Sandal or Moulton Station once was down this section. So this station shut in 1961 and it was located, I'm just trying to remember exactly where, just there I think. I was here. So this is where Sandal or Moulton Station was. As I say, closed 1961. So I've been closed quite a while now. There used to be a curve actually on, on the section here used to be a curve down to the GM main line. That's been shut for years. Trying to see again the guidelines. It's very, very sort of poor visibility there. There we go. Sort of a it, I think. Doesn't help that the radius continually keeps changing. So we can see we're going to end up going under the hill here. So I'm going to just lower the terrain temporarily. 
and then we'll bring it back up when we do the actual root building section. So let's lower it to 44 over quite a wide distance here. So we can just lower the terrain so we're not laying track through a hillside. Because uh, that was, you know, useless, really. Yeah, put it on to passenger. And then obviously need to change all the track properties. I'm going to check the distance we've laid in a second. Slightly off there, I'm not happy about that. That should be a bit better. Yeah, that's better. There's a really long curve, this curve. So what we can do then is we need to see how far we've actually laid at this gradient. Um, so what I do, we need we're looking the number we're looking for obviously is on here. We're looking to lay 1,046 meters at this gradient. I think I've laid way more than that. I have to re end up relaying a load of it now. So a lot three, two, one. The gradient change. I'm looking at the bottom of the screen there. You can see where the gradient is on the uh, little bar. So it changes from 1,947 to 1,321 there. I want to click there with the select tool. Again, check out the early episodes for this in detail. And then we're going along, we're looking to measure 1,046 metres of track. And it's no biggie, I've gone over that, so this is where it should end, that gradient. Now I'm not going to start moving arrows and putting, you know, manually changing the gradient, I'm going to actually rip this bit out. So we never want to be messing with arrows on gradients on track, unless you have to. So let's rip the track out there. And it's a case of making sure now that we continue on at the right gradient. Laying the gradients, I'll be honest, is really quite easy. It's a case of no way I've actually got their gradients right, because in some areas they just don't. <laughs> uh, we've seen that in one of the early episodes. They just don't. They're wrong. Hopefully these are right, and I've not got enough knowledge on me to know whether they are completely correct. They're not usually miles off, but uh, I have seen some places where they're quite shocking, to be honest. And uh, ended up with like a 4 metre inch in gradient in one place. And I had to cross-reference with stuff, but um, hopefully these are all correct. We'll be able to tell from where the terrain is. You know, that's why you need to know your view that you're doing, really. So we've got a full mile there. One in it, one one eighty point three eight seven to one eight one point three eight seven. So it's a full mile of one in three five five uphill, um, and a full mile is one thousand seven hundred and sixty meter uh, yards. Around 760 yards, 1,609 meters, and the gradient again to double check is 1 in 355 and it's uphill. So 355 uphill. Now, this will take us through Shevik Cutting, um, which used to be a tunnel when the line was two track and they widened it to make it four track uh, years and you know, over 100 years ago, um, from what I recall. I haven't got all the information on me. I've got actually a pack of research that I've been using because I, I am still going to at some point. Uh, do our spin-off series which is going to be exploring old railways and stuff so I've got a little research pack together that I've been doing for this line but I've not sort of looked at it for a few months so everything I'm saying is coming off the top of my head from what I remember and hopefully it's all correct so we've got a mile of this to lay let's just knock that off that little adjustment I just did because it shouldn't have really been there. The point I've got is I've set up, it's my Google, the, the issue we've got is it's my Google overlay. It's sort of set a bit wrong. It's zoomed in too much really for track lane. You can sort of see it's disappearing really close up because of the way I've got the tile and everything set. Let's just go into the menus and change that. I think we'll be sensible. So what I'm talking about is I'll show you what I'm talking about with this. Just seeing how long we've gone into the episode. So we're now about 25 minutes in. So we're plowing on into this episode. 
So we're going to your settings in TS, you want to go to your tools tab, Google Maps. Now, we want to display 7x7 titles, but we're currently a bit too zoomed in. We're doing it more for scenery, so whether we've got zoomed in at the moment, we can zoom it out a bit. So that when we get 7x7 titles, we'll see a bit further because it's zoomed out a bit more. At least that's the theory anyway. Whether it works or not, so it matter, but hopefully it will. Because at the moment you can only see a sort of like short distance from where we're actually laying, so it's a bit of an issue really, to be honest. But it's alright, I've only got about 5 miles of this delay. <laughs> Old 7F there doesn't look too bad on that screenshot in the loading screen, looking at that. I'm just in the models like... Must be 15 years old. <laughs> Alright, let's have a look. So we found where our track ended there. Let's see. Right, now you can see what I mean. So before, we could only actually see to about that bridge there. It's in the centre of the screen. Now, it's loaded up right down there so we can see exactly where we're laying. Now, one thing we've got to look at here is you can see here, look, there's a Google overlay change. So what this is, is this is a change in imagery. Uh, it's gone from being really nice because it's Wakefield City District to being crap because it's just sticks. Um, and what that you can see, and this is a major thing you got to remember when you're doing view building, look at the track. Look. So, one track there, one track there, that's the same track. That's because Google Image Overlay is never actually exactly correct. It's never straight. When you do, when you get a join in the images, it's never perfect. You can see there, look, offset slightly. And all the way along, you'll find there's bits where it's offset. And railway lines is obviously the main thing that you'll notice with, but the roads you can sort of see. Look, it goes offset as you go in along there. Uh, and in some areas you don't see it, so there look you can't see it as much, but here on the track, which is ironically the one thing that we're worried about, worried about, you can really see there where it changes quite quite distinctly. So that's one thing that we've really got to watch out for there, because that's going to be very difficult, and that's a really long straight, it's like a two mile straight that we're going on to. So this is going to be a bit of a testing time. I'm sure of that. But we can see at least where we're going now anyway. We've uncovered the uh, issue there that we're going to have. So obviously at some point in this curve it's going to be wrong because it's impossible to be completely right when the track changes. It's just not possible. <laughs> so we go into the Chevy cutting here. Again this is where I said it used to be a tunnel. It's, quite a, it's actually a rock lined cutting but obviously because the trees have grown over it so much these days that you can't actually see the rocks much anymore. So let's carry on around the curve, as I said. We've got to watch for this curve, where the giant and the track will be. Where the sort of section where it'll deviate. And in real life, there is actually a kink in the track on this section somewhere. It sort of goes from being on the far left line to what would have been the second line in. Because you can see, obviously, as I said, it used to be four tracks. You can clearly see that it was four tracks until the late 80s. The other thing is, is that I've obviously I've turned the zoom level down, so now the, the image quality is really crap as well. So this is going to be a case of just trying to find where the best spot to end this curve is going to be. Um, and this is all trial and error. So we get to there, we'll see if it ends there. We've got to follow the track all the way down then. So all the way down here we've got to follow the line. So you can see there... It looks like it curves, but in all honesty, I'm not certain it does. Now, there is a few photos that I've taken somewhere around here. Let's have a look and see if they've got any sign of that curve on them. Um, ah, this is sort of what I was on about. 
So that's the footbridge and the cutting and the distance. Now it looks like it stays pretty much straight down there, but honestly, it's quite hard to tell from that shot. This shows it. So you see up there, look, we've got a, a sort of a kink in the track, right in the far back right corner. Not this one, in the, there's obviously this one in the front corner as well, but there's one in the far right corner, um, which must be this bit. Try and work out exactly where that is. It is, it is somewhere. It's past the footbridge. So where's the footbridge? Footbridge is up in that cutting. There's the footbridge. So it's after the footbridge. There it is. Yeah, it is. It is. It's on the road bridge. So after the track goes over the road bridge, it's on the far left, and then it crosses a bit more to the right. So let's cut the track there. Delete that bit. We'll start the curve somewhere around here, but we need to work out if we've actually done the full mile at one in 355 yet. So there's a lot of things that we've got to keep on our mind whilst we're doing this. Uh, it's never straightforward, because it's TS, and why would it ever be straightforward? Here was me thinking this would be a quick win to uh, lay this bit. <laughs> so we're looking for that change from 321 to 355. It's in the bottom again. There you go, you can see it. 355 to 321. So we'll smooth that out afterwards. I'm not smoothing it right now. Although with that one, you'll not really notice much of a change. So what we're looking for is 1,609 meters on here. We've gone way past it. 1,609. It's obviously it's in the cutting where the uh, top of this would be, which makes sense. It would have been in the tunnel where the hill is. So we can cut that there. There we go. Right, so we got that. 1 in 355 gradient to its end point. And it's now 1 in 378. And that is for less than a mile. So let's. First of all, what we need to do is we need to work out. Oh, it's over a mile, sorry. It goes from 180 to 178. Look. So we need to work out the distance from 178844 to the end of mile 178. So that is 1760 minus 844. So there's 916 meter, uh, yards from 178.844 to the end of mile 178 when you go into 179 then we need to go through the entirety of 179 because the gradient ends at 180.387 so we need to add 1760 gives us 2676 then we need to add this 387 on for that bit there so let's add the 387 gives us a grand total of 3063 yards we need to lay at 1 in 378 so 3063 i think it was yep that's 2800 meters nice easy round number at 1 in 378 uphill so to change this down here 1 in 378 now some people might not bother with that little change there from 355 to 378, but if, if you don't bother with it, you're just doing your view wrong. And I can illustrate exactly why that's a problem. So if we lay this at 378, for instance, right, so we'll lay 500 meters at 378. Let's then lay on the same bit a track 500 meters at 355. So we'll go to here, lay 500 meters at 355. Now that won't make much of a difference, obviously, because it's not much of a difference. But it does make the track slightly lower. You know, if we laid two and a half miles of that wrong, it's 10 centimeters out. If you, that's only 500 meters. If we laid two and a half miles of that wrong, we'd obviously be, you know, you'd be, end up being a meter or something wrong in the end. If not a little bit, actually be more than that, probably more than a metre out. And that's why even when you've got little changes, you want to just make sure that you're doing the little change. And so that's that's about the most smallest change of gradient you're going to get. Sometimes if you do it and just ignore a little bits, you're going to end up with your gradient so far wrong that they're just completely fictional and you know you might as well just make it up as you go along. Or just follow the hills or something daft like that. You know. You could you could really if you really wanted to, you could actually follow the dem down here. But that'd be a really stupid way of doing it. Because of the fact that, for instance, we've had to cut through a hill here. Great, yeah, I know there's a hill there in real life, but I'm not gonna cut through, you know, I'm not gonna just do the gradients wrong. 
when I've got them available. So you, you do really need the gradients to be doing root building to uh, a decent standard because if you don't do the gradients right then your entire route's wrong, essentially. It's all part of the learning process. Obviously, when you're on your first routes and stuff, it can be different. Um, yeah, you might not know how to do gradients, which I think is fair enough. And especially if, you know, if it's a freeway route, it doesn't. Yeah, you know, it's a lot less of a problem. Obviously, if you're doing a commercial route, then you need it's the sort of thing that's it's basics really. Especially if you do it completely wrong, because if you end up with gradients completely wrong, you end up with, when you're doing a scenario for instance, if you've done say a 1 in 100 when it should be a 1 in 200, some trains, uh, heavy freights and stuff won't actually be able to get up it anymore. And the timings will obviously be skewed as well. Obviously if you just put a summit, five, you know, 100 metres, 200 metres, even 300 metres in the wrong place slightly. And that's not necessarily such a huge problem. And what I'm trying to do is just get this to straighten up a bit. So you can see already, look, we're, we're getting a little bit off kilter there. So we're probably going to have to go back and relay this curve. So we're not far off. We're fairly in the right place, but we're not completely. Yeah, we're close enough. I think we're close enough anyway. Let's have a look how it is when it's pulled up to the ground. Yeah, we're no more than a metre. When all the scenery is in, nobody's going to be noticing that. So again, we're just trying to make sure that we get this curve in here. So if you were laying this and you didn't know the route, you could easily end up thinking that this was sort of almost... Because um, what Google has a tendency to do is it'll make straight lines look curved just because of the, cur like the curvature of Earth and the, the fact that it's taken from a satellite image and stuff like that. It makes it naturally a bit more skewy than it would in real life. So if you just looked at it from a plane, obviously it's dead straight, but sometimes Google can make it look curved. So you could easily trick yourself into thinking that is straight when it's not. And I know for a fact when people see it in TS, they're going to think that I've done a, a curve that shouldn't be there, or it should be perfectly straight. Well, you guys have seen on the photo, on the video there, that it's not. There's uh, two S curves in it. Now you can see there, look. So what we can see here, this is Royston Junction, the site of. So there used to be loads of sidings in here. Um, this was for Moncton Coke Works and the colliery at Royston, which was in here. Got demolished about three or four years ago. We still operating until about five years ago. And this is where we get into where there was a, a lot of railway history. And this is the, the area I want to focus on when I do my eventual Lost Railway series because there's so much railway history in this area we're looking at. Uh, and there used to be another line here. This line used to go across to Crigleston and uh, Healy Mills and stuff like that, in that direction. Uh, and the Great Central, also, uh, one of their railways used to cross over the top here. They used to have all sorts of lines. There used to be, um, there used to be a head trunk somewhere here as well. But there was a lot of railway action around here. There used to be a, the Great Central went across here in a really big girder bridge. Uh, the only thing left these days is the parapets, unfortunately. So I believe though, I'm not sure if those sets of points is still actually there anymore in real life. I'm not sure how old this foot, this uh, image is. I guess it probably is still there to be honest. Oh, we've ended up with a phantom set of points there a lot. Bad mark. Let's go into the passenger setting. Don't know why we're going into that setting, to be honest, but we're just trying to get that curve there, look, so it goes more or less in the direction that we want it to. You see it straightens up here. Now, back in the day, this line actually used to be, you know, 70, 80 miles an hour. These days, it's obviously 
Yeah, way slower than that. Uh, although the sand train does still get quite a rattle on down here. The sand train itself comes from uh, Middleton Towers, which is near Kinsling. So ironically, when you're using this combined with Fenline from Benedict Cooper, you'll be able to uh, run both ends of the sand train. You'll be able to run the start point from Middleton Towers and this end section from Nottingley down to here to Monk Burton. So we're going past the old sidings and everything here. I always remember this place, it was where I live in Croft, and you could actually see from the top of the hill, um, back over there, where I live, you could actually see this place in the valley dist in the distance, and you could see the flame on top of the coke works and everything. And just happy memories for me, um, remembering this place as it was. A big one for the industrial you know, side of things. Some ways I wish coal mining was still around, but then times move on, obviously. Massive coal mining area back in its day. Uh, and that was obviously the main traffic for the railway around here. Um, certainly back in the old days, the amount of traffic that used to come out of the yard that we'll soon see. Uh, down at Carlton, there was a huge amount of traffic used to come out of there. Uh, and a lot of coal trains used to come out of the coal to Royston and Monks and all coke works as well was... Uh, a busy player with the traffic on railways as well. So what I'm doing now is I'm just measuring up because we've got 2,800 metres is what we are looking at laying here and I think we've probably already gone way past that. We have. So we are Now I can tell you what the actual boundary for this gradient is is it's either that bridge or that bridge. It's actually around the junction 2008. The junction, there was a load of crossovers just here somewhere, and that is where the boundary and the end point for the gradient is. There is usually with gradients, you'll find there is a a set end to them for a lot of them, so it's either going to be a bridge or it's going to be a junction or something like that. There's a reason why they end in uh, places quite often. That, you know, some places obviously it's random, but quite often they'll end at an actual point, such as a junction or a bridge or a, you know, a, a landmark, and you know, just where the contour of the hill is, for instance. So this will be a logical place for it to end because this is where the signal box and the crossovers were, the junction. So our next gradient change is minus 404. So now we're going to start going downhill. Obviously that's going in towards Royston itself and down towards the junction, the yard, uh, down towards the yards. So that is 229 yards, which we need to put in here, 229, 209 metres. That's 404 downhill. So I want to put it in minus 404. The rest of it will order itself there. You can sell out the track. And we don't want to do much here. Uh, as I said, we're only doing 209 metres. So see where that takes us to. Interestingly, it just takes us over the river bridge, which makes sense again. And then it's a 404 uphill. That's 615 minus 351. It's in there. And 264 yards. So 264 yards. 241 metres at 404 uphill. So just delete the minus off that. Uh, and just carry on. So again, let's just double check that one. That's 241 metres that we need. Two point four there. Two point five. I've forgotten already what it was. Two hundred forty-one. So that's basically two hundred forty now. We need to lay. Just about there. Don't worry about the ground being so low, but all the tracks are obviously get brought up before, and then it's downhill again. Um, quite a lot of upsy downsy gradients around here. Quite steep down, it's one in 200, so that's obviously down towards the station, I'm going to guess. I, I reckon this gradient is going to end in the cutting somewhere before the station. 
judging by those distances. We'll find out in a minute. So 1760 minus 1531 gives us 229. That's from that 177.1531 to the end of mile 177. And then we've got 351 on the next mile to add on. That's 580 yards. So 580 yards in here gives us 530 meters to lay. And that's at minus 199. So let's go ahead and start laying that out right now. Now we'll do super elevation. I'll probably do that off stream because it's going to off video because it's going to take a while to do all that and the smoothing as well. Uh, I'm probably just going to get the track to the actual end of the line that we need to get to today. Let's carry on passenger. Where's the curve start? It's somewhere around it. It's hard to tell exactly where. So this is the hardest bit. He's actually trying to see where you want to lay your bloody track. There, that looks about right. Because once you move, you see, it, it moves where you are. So it's very challenging to actually do this correctly, 100% borderline impossible to be honest all the time the idea is that you don't want too many changes in radius as you go around a curve because if you go around it at a decent speed you'll start noticing the change in radius regularly it's not something that you want to be seeing so let's see how much we've actually got at 199 now we've gone way over again what we were looking at we were looking at 530 meters yeah we've done more than 530 that's for sure I'm going to go here, select again, 530 is going to be here. So it is around where the cutting was, so the, the coke works here was actually sat way up on the uh, banking. The lines and everything went into there on a gradient, quite a steep one. And um, there was obviously, there was exchange sidings here that were worked there. I've actually got in my collection of images on Flickr, see if I find it. Got a couple of photos of Oyston, which I might as well show whilst we're on the area and everything. So people get a bit of an idea of the area. Is Flickr not working today? Flickr's awful since uh, he got the takeover of from uh, was it Smug Mug a couple of years ago? So I've actually got on my flick, I've got quite a few shots here I can show from the area. So this is the line today, this is the train that goes down there. That's just past where we are at the moment. So that's the uh, sound train returning from Monk Britain to um, probably Peterborough actually, March, March Yard. That's the old station at Sandhall Malton that we already went through earlier on, in the middle of Main Line. That's at a foot crossing down past Royston last year. Just beyond where we are at the moment. And obviously, as I said, there was quite a lot of railway interest around here. So there was a, a steam motive power depot at Royston. And I have somewhere... It's going to be in my actual collection of images rather than on Flickr. I've got an image of the station in my collection, but it's not actually uh, on Flickr, unfortunately. So I can't show that. Otherwise, I would do. Um, because it, it's a fantastic area. The station used to be just below all this land up here and they had the coke works and the houses and everything that was sat up there and it looked amazing. It's for an industrial perspective, pretty grim from a, a otherwise, but... five three one. So we're looking at the next radius, it's 1015 uphill. Minus 1144. 387 meter, uh, yards. That's 370 yards, 353 meters at 1015 uphill. So let's lay this then. So we're getting not far to, towards the end of the line, really, to be honest. Only a couple more, more miles to do. Where's the 387 mark? There 
There it is. So that's 387 meters there, but 115 uphill. So now we've got minus two. How, how far into the episode are we at? 40 minutes. We're about 55 minutes in, so I'm going to call this in a few minutes. We've got just over a mile to later the uh, run around loop, I think. So we've got a bit of minus 248 now. So that's 1144. Minus 633. It's 511 yards at minus 248. So it's 467 meters at minus 248. So minus 248 in here. Now I'm going to guess this is going to end somewhere around the road bridge or the station area. Somewhere around that area. Past the road bridge by the looks. Because it's going to be 467. So yeah, it's going to be way past the station. It's going to be about where the uh, entrance to the steam shed used to be. So that's 4 meters. We want 464 is what we're looking for now. There we are, 465. So yeah, this is not Royston and not on a station site, so that used to be here. There used to be all sorts of plain fields and there used to be houses and everything up here. It's a ghost town really now. Um, this was all railway land. Literally all of it. These are the old railway houses, these here. Quite uh, distinctive. There used to be some sidings here on the inside. Good yard. This closed in 1968, the station and the shed and everything here. So the Royston MPD was there that we saw on that photo with the 4F on it. Now you can kind of see, it's quite difficult. But there used to be a triangle of lines just here. Pull that up a bit. There used to be a triangle there, you can sort of just see the outline of it in the trees. And then there used to be a line up there to join this line. And this was the Horn Barnsley Railway. Bit of a white elephant route, it never actually made it to my Barnsley, it only ever made it to Cuddeth, which was just in front of where we are now. Um, but you used to be able to go up here, and this, the bit that stayed open the longest was the bit just here to where they used to reverse towards the back of Royston um, Coke Works, Moncton Coke Works. There used to be a junction just under this bridge somewhere where they used to set back and go over the hill with 4Fs and stuff pushing wagons up there to be loaded and unloaded. But there used to be loads of more yards. This was a huge yard. This was an absolutely massive yard at Carlton. Between the two lines, there used to be an engine shed at Cuddeth as well, uh, an L&R one. Um, you can see here is where the Horn Barnsley and everything used to join in. So the Horn Barnsley joined the Midland there and went down to Cuddeth. And then you could also go into Barnsley over the bridge there. And where we're laying to eventually will be into the glass works just up there. We're just going to lay probably to here today, I think. Because it's going to take a while otherwise. Especially when I start doing bloody stopping and starting for a history lesson. Um, so it's minus 301 next. So minus 301, that is a 633 minus 193. I could, have, I could have worked that myself, but I didn't because I can't be bothered. And I'm also thick. It's 440, 402 meters, and that is at minus 301. But minus 301 on the gradients there. But it's quite a way, I've spent a lot of time over the last few months and stuff walking around in these old areas and I, as I say I want to take my camera and actually walk the area for the YouTube channels. Not the track obviously because that's you know, trespassing. But the old railway sites over here and, and indeed as you carry on down the old Midland you can walk the old trap bed quite easily because that's been ripped since 1999, 2000. It's a very interesting area, there's, there's all sorts of old relics laying about, there's bits of old track in the bushes, there's... Um, signal posts and stuff like that. I think it would make quite an interesting feature to uh, do that as a separate video series. But yeah, this bit sees trains three or four times a week. And it has also, as, as I've said in previous episodes, it was used by Bombardier to test the Voyagers back in 2000-2001. Uh, it gets test trains, and it's also been used regularly by Northern for skid pan training. Uh, there have been units out from Neville Hill down here, and uh, Holbeck. I think it's Holbeck actually they might come from. What are we doing here? Minus 301. The change must be somewhere here. 
There it is. And how many meters were we laying that for? 402 meters we're laying that for. So let's have a look at this. So, we've now got the last mile basically, over the last mile, is minus 298, so we're just, we don't know any, any beyond that, that's basically as far as the gradients go, so um, it's minus 298 for the foreseeable. It is in a bank in here, and I'm quite glad that the, the track's still up slightly, which means we've got it correct. Um, or certainly with intolerances anyway. Because this is actually where that photo was taken that I showed you a few minutes ago, the 66 side on, was about there. We'll compare in a second. Because obviously I've not edited the train anyway, the train will get edited. But you want to be roughly around the base terrain, sort of level. Um, you want to be relevant to what it should be. So if, you, if you're wildly off, then it means that you've got some major problems. Like if the track was 10 metres underground when it should be 10 metres overground, then, yeah, you've, you've naffed your gradients up big time somewhere. And at that point, once you get to that point, if we on this line it wouldn't be such a problem because it's a branch and we're not going to connect through to anywhere. But if you are doing a main line and you start doing your gradients wrong, then you've on a, you've on a real problem because you're going to end up, if you start extending that route, you're going to end up with all your terrain having to be done manually and it's you basically becomes fictional at that point. turn easements off now over here because I don't want to be doing all this pipe work easements on to be honest I could do it and it won't cause a mate you know it's it um if it was payware I probably would but for this little side on this end of this route then mm, no just can't bother <laughs> Uh, and he's finished the curve with easements on otherwise that curve can't have easements on so let's finish the curve with easements on at least see if we can find any photos of this because to me this looks like it should be oh there's a shot there that I want to try so look at the shot I'm just taken this is a shot that I want to try myself at some point you can actually see this is a Chris Wilson shot I think it is that's a Chris yeah anyway this is, um, you can see up there, the remains of what was left at Royston. This is where the MPD used to be. Not my shot, as you see there, down at the bottom. It's a cracking photo location, certainly. Uh, a drone shot, by the looks of it. Which I would like to go and try at some point. But, you can sort of see with the uh, area here, you can see it clearly tell that it used to be railway land. There's actually a lot of gorse in there, that's worth noting. What I'm trying to find in between all that was trying to find Mumba and Run and Loop. See if it's left there straight. Which it doesn't look like it is to be honest. It looks like it's on a bit of a curve. Try taking out the term run round and see what we get then. Obviously you get loads of other photos. Of course you get uh, Alex Slate in there because he apparently takes thousands of photos and puts the entire schedule of the train in it. Um, seriously getting loads of random photos now. So what I'm, doing, what I'm trying to do is work out if there should be a bit of a curve on that uh, run around look because I'm struggling to get it to go straight. 
and there's no real decent cab rides down this section so it's obviously a little bit more difficult there is looking at it there look, it looks like there's a curve slightly to the left halfway down it's very hard to see that I think it does start curving slightly to the right there look it has to do because if it goes straight you're going wrong so let's go slightly there to the right there and I'll finish up all this off, off the episode so what I was going to check to validate whether the gradients are reasonably right or not was just to see if I've got this looking like it's about right I mean, remember bear in mind again that the terrain is not final so we're just looking to see if it's around right if it's within a 10 meter tolerance basically uh, although ideally you want to be probably within a one or two meter tolerance and what i mean by that is that the track is about the right height above the terrain as the real photos and location would be uh, and you've got to take into account there uh, obviously that ts is crap at recreating that a lot of times um but yeah i want to just make sure and I can show you how I would how you know how I do this, how I go about showing it. How I go about working it out, sorry, whether I've got the gradients right at this point. So we're looking at this photo here. Now that's all on that fence line. This fence line here, I think. Yeah, I think it's all on that fence line. I would say it's reasonably right. I think it, I'll lower the terrain a bit in the middle there, because if you look here. It sort of gets higher though, doesn't it? That's where the power line, the power line should be directly in front of me. Which it is, it's there. Yeah, I'm happy with that. But you can see how I would judge, that's how I judge it, is to work it out from photos and videos and see how the gradient should be when I'm getting to a certain point. So we've done a few miles there and just checked it. Anyway, you can see there what we've got now. We've got a uh, good chunk of track there. So you can drive that through from Nottingham or if you want to do how you would do skid pan training i'm not sure but if you want to come through from holbeck and do a route learner or never will you could do but you get the idea we've got uh, plenty for you to do there and just as i said at the beginning of the video i just want to put this section in which means a lot to me so i'm doing it um cheers very much for watching guys i uh, appreciate your views as always please do like comment subscribe and uh, subscribe to our channel we'd love you to do that don't forget you can check out Tom, he's on Twitch. At the moment it seems to be Thursdays and Sundays, but it sort of varies around what his days are available and stuff like that. Um, so you can catch him at twitch.tv forward slash trainsim underscore TV. Any questions or anything, don't forget you can put them in the uh, comments below. And uh, cheers very much for watching guys. See you later. Bye.